Okay. Welcome, everybody. I'd like to introduce Alexander Nazonov to you. And he's going to talk about just-in-time code generator inside the NetBSD kernel, something we don't even have for all architectures in Firefox. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hi. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm Alex. And uh, sorry, I, I'm going to sit uh, during my talk because I have a slight problem with my leg. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's uh, going mostly to be uh, I talk about development this feature, so it's mostly for developers. But even though it's inside the kernel, there is a, uh, it's not, it, I will show you not only C code, but I also show you uh, lower code, which can run in the kernel. And you know, it just, just brings new possibilities. And I only started doing Lua while doing, uh, while preparing for this uh, talk, because I needed some graphs. And you know, the easiest way is to generate graphs rather than draw them manually. <coughs> Uh, and I've got quite, uh, you know, quite a few of them. Um, so let's start. So this project started uh, yeah, near the Christmas time, and I just I did before Christmas I did some research and I make a decision to start working on the project on, on the 26th of December, and I created pro uh, repository on, on GitHub. It's still there, but it, at the moment it's on the. It's postponed till next March, but I'm working. Uh, I, I switched to NetBSD3, and I, <coughs> like, uh, like one year late, I, I added the code to NetBSD3. But it was just the beginning. I, since then, I <coughs> did a couple of more iterations, including some extensions to BPF uh, language for uh, our new packet filter uh, uh, by requests of uh, from Midalbus, uh, and yeah, and still work in progress and. I, you know, I just while preparing for the presentation, I you know just discovered how cool it's to use Lua, and you know just I'm going to switch at least for prototyping. I'm going to switch to Lua. You'll see. Um, so yeah, I'll start with just uh, bas basic. Um, yeah, just I think I, I assume everyone understands what BPF uh, is, and uh, to, to to enable JIT, you just need in a module kernel. Like if you run Intel. And you know it's more, uh, most likely a module kernel unless you, you know, compiled a mon monolithic kernel yourself, and you just need to mo uh, load BPF module, which automatically loads SLJIT module. SLJIT is the library I, which I use for code generation. I'll talk about it uh, in a moment, and then you just enable uh, JIT through sys sys uh, CTL um, tool and uh, for. Monolithic kernel, you need to compile with SLG option uh, and BPFG option, and also <coughs> after you compile, you also need to turn it on. And to you to use it, you just need like type TCP dump, then your filter uh, program, and uh, and then you can check whether it's compiled or not. You just use an F start and grab for JIT, and if you see a line, then you know this, you have uh, yeah, yeah your program running in the kernel is is JITed. Um, and one one thing to to note here is this uh, you can you can turn on and off BPF uh, at any time, but it doesn't affect running programs. If you have some programs not compiled, uh, then they will not be compiled when you turn on the JIT. They will continue running inter interpreted um, until you restart. You know, just if you, if you you know stop TCP dump and start again, you know it will be uh, compiled. <coughs> So why why I'm, I'm doing this? Well, first of all, it was for fun, and uh, uh, there were there are some uh, implementations in other operating systems, and I thought, you know, it would, it would be nice to catch up and, and have our own JIT BPF interpreter. Oh, sorry, um, uh, not interpreter, the uh, compiler. Uh, actually, this this slide is supposed to be you know, the, to show one line by line by line, but I didn't manage to <laughs> to do it. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, good news. BPF is fast um, because BPF interpreter is fast um, because it's in you know, a small compact uh, interpreter. And uh, but JIT compile is, is several times fast. I, I I didn't do a lot of uh, performance measurements. It's clear that the com uh, uh, compiled code is faster. And for a short uh, for a short program, I, I tested one or two programs for one particular short program. It was four times faster. Roughly four times faster on on my AMD box and on ARM. AMD was running uh, NetBSD. ARM was on um, uh, was on on Linux. 
because when I started, I you know I, I, I used I used NetBSD at home and used my uh, ARM Chromebook uh, for like just uh, and I mostly mostly uh, did coding on the train uh, using my ARM Chromebook. But unfortunately, it, you know it was Linux. Well, not 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 unfortunately because you know I I I, I maintained. Uh, um, uh, platform independent, no, not independent, but just, you know, it works on Linux and, uh, yeah, it worked on Linux and, and NetBSD, and I'm pretty sure it's, it should be straightforward to port it to, uh, to FreeBSD. Um, and, yeah, it was actually mostly uh, user space, but I, I later you know, just uh, adapted it to, to kernel space. Yeah, and there is a, because I'm using an SLG library and, uh, I, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'll describe what this object library is, but it has a, sl a small overhead, especially, especially for short programs. I think most overhead is in a prolog, epilog of functions, so it needs to save some registers uh, when you know when you call a generated function. So yeah, they, they have a special kind of ABI for, um, for calling or, or like you know just to pass in arguments and uh, uh, all this stuff. So yeah, I, I'll briefly discuss what BPF is. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone is familiar with this. So basically, it's a raw interface to the kernel uh, to, to do packet filtering in the kernel. And it, it comes with machine, machine uh, uh, compact machine language, for not for real hardware, but for some virtual machine. And it's, it's very simple. Um, uh, so and it's yeah, usually wrapped. Well, it's, it's wrapped in the PCAP library, and this is what, uh, normally, what people n normally use. But you don't have to use it. You, you could send directly to the B BPF device. Uh, so when you do TCP dump, uh, it compiles the program from the high-level fil filter language to uh, low-level machine language, and it sends it send this to the kernel through the raw interface. Uh, and it's usually interpreted in the kernel, but it can be compiled. Um, so yeah, as I said, it's 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 very simple. Outside, it looks like a function in a special written in a special <coughs> assembly, uh, which you call, and uh, yeah, it, it has a single entry. It doesn't do nested calls and has no side effect. You just uh, what you get back is the return value, which is unsigned, a 32-bit unsigned integer. Uh, so it has two registers A and X. A is the main register. X is auxiliary, I think, register. But sometimes it's used. And it comes with a small stack, 16, 32-bit uh, memory words. And uh, yeah, ha simple instructions like add, uh, multiply, uh, bit, bit operations. Yeah, they, they have one exception because it was uh, original VPF is interpreted. And uh, they thought you know, if, if they combine two operations, uh, three, uh, just yeah, two operations, then they will get a speed up for some very common <coughs> operation. So there are no backward jumps. It always jumps uh, forwards, and therefore there are no loops. This this was um, uh, f uh, made for security. Uh, no, yeah, for security purpose because you don't want to hand your system from user space. So no no matter what, it should uh, finish in uh, finite uh, number of steps. And there is also a limit of how, how long you can, your program can, uh, can be. So yeah, it indeed f finishes in finite number of steps, and it's quite quite small number of uh, instructions. So you can do, uh, yeah, because it's filtering, it's, uh, everything is around loading from a packet, and you can load a byte, a half word, and a 32-bit word. So there are some examples here. Um, oops. Uh, I was going to do something else. So that index load, sometimes you need to load at unknown uh, offset, and you use the X <coughs> register. So X plus 9 means you know, just uh, yeah, add the, the, uh, the content of X is 9, and you know, just load that, that offset. Uh, and I also asked for, a while ago, I asked to disable um, wraparound. So, it, it, I, I think, yeah, everyone knows what uh, wraparound is because for unsigned, it's unsigned uh, arithmetic and there is no overflows. There are no overflows. It's modular arithmetic. So that's why I call uh, uh, wraparound. So if you want to do x minus 1, load at x minus 1 offset, you cannot do this uh, by, by, just let me try this again. No, it doesn't work. 
So I, I, I'm, I, I, use, I use it for the first time. So, oh, all right. so this one. So you cannot do this uh, because it, you know, just would effectively, it effectively mean this. Um, and uh, it's not what uh, BPF programs do. They, if 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 they want to achieve the same effect, they would just subtract uh, one from x and you know just slow it at x offset. Um, yeah, it has arithmetic operation. Also, I, by requests of I mean, August, I added two extensions, but these two extensions um, are available only inside the kernel, and they introduce you know, like, uh, a very significant. Uh, change to the at least to the compiler because those uh, processor functions and external memory they both ha have side effects, so it's not you know it's not any more return value and that's all you get. So you can you know, modify external memory or you, you call external function which can you know modify something outside of, of BPF. Um, but this this is strictly limited to the kernel because we, especially with coprocessor functions you can do a lot of, of stuff if if you know if you do it from user space you can, you can break stuff easily. Um, okay, let's yeah the, let's take I'm, I'm not sure it's very, it's not very visible I'm afraid and I have bigger <laughs> this is the smallest uh, filter program so basically it, it starts by let me check if it no. Just trying to understand, maybe I can zo zoom in. No, that's not OK. Uh, so basically, here it loads at offset 12, uh, half, half, half by the uh, offset 12, and then it, it does a comparison uh, here. It, it's like, Whereas it, ah, yeah, first of all, it's for TCP IP, like simple, very simple role. Uh, you want to, to see IP packets. So you just, you know, this program is very simple. Just check the, at certain offset, it checks the protocol uh, uh, field and compares with the base sum value. And if, if, it's, well, if it's IP, then it will return this value, you, you short marks, otherwise it will return zero. Um, and it's very common to, the, the last instruction is return zero, and the one before is return your short marks. Uh, normally, a filter program just either reject all or accept all. And this is you know, how you say accept or reject all. Um, so, yeah, and the, yeah, I forgot to mention that on, uh, on in, in the round, uh, round rectangle on the right side, you see a, a packet lens, a, a minimum packet lens. You <coughs> You need to, to be able to um, to load uh, the, that half 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 word that I've said twelve. You need fourteen packet uh, a packet of of lines fourteen or more. And if it's shorter, then there is an implicit return uh, zero, and there is always implicit return zero if if your packet is too short. That's you know. And I put fourteen uh, uh, in the box. That means you need a packet at least uh, fourteen uh, bytes uh, bytes long. Um, so and now it's more uh, a bit more complicated filter, which you know, uh, corresponds to ICMP. Uh, the thing to note here is there are two loads. Yeah, let me just switch back again. Th this one is at offset 14, and this one is at offset. Oh, uh, the first one at 12. The second one is at, uh, 23. Load byte at offset 23, and uh, this is a pattern actually. You see. Access uh, uh, to packet bytes in increasing, at increasing offsets, and it's uh, typical because when you go through a protocol layers, they usually you know, just go in. Uh, a protocol headers go in increasing, at increasing offsets. Um, yeah, that's just often the case, but not always. But you know, often the case, and it, it, it actually can help in some um, for some optimizations. And again, you see this return zero, return uh, your short marks. Um, on this slide, and uh, yeah, and this one is again with two implicit return zero uh, checks. Um, yeah, I think it's even harder. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know how to fix this. So, uh, source view. Uh, 
that is. No, I think it. It always. Should. Oh, no. Anyway, uh, there is. Oh, maybe actually I can. Yeah, I can do this, but it's not. So this this one is for a particular ICMP type, which is uh, uh, ICMP echo request, and you know, just again some. Yeah, like load branch, load branch at equation offset, but not always in equation offset, but like sometimes it goes. And now I cannot even can <laughs> I highlight things anymore. And, uh, and uh, this one has a, actually I can just point. This one introduces a new instruction uh, loaded uh, um, indexed offset with indexed by X. And uh, because there is no wraparound, I know uh, the package should be at least uh, 15 bytes, just 15 bytes here, and somewhere on top you see it actually needs some um, more than 15, 24. But yeah, the main thing is there are many fallbacks to return zero, both in implicit and explicit. These are explicit returns, like basically check the field. It's not, it's not what you want, just fallback to return zero. Otherwise, go, you know, go, go down the stack or whatever you're doing with your filter. Um, and you know, just until you either reach return zero or return or accept or reject. Um, yeah, and this this one again with uh, one, two, three, four, five implicit, um, five implicit returns, and oops. And this one actually has two checks. One is because uh, x plus 14 can also wrap around. It, it needs an additional check. So there are actually two checks. One is you know, just x plus 14, and all, the second one is for the result of x plus 14. It shouldn't plus one byte. This, this one shouldn't, shouldn't wrap around. So <laughs> because you don't know the value of x in advance. It's, uh, and this actually, uh, that, uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, ex ex is the exception uh, to the simple risk uh, rule of BPF. It's, uh, it's an instruction to quickly load um, IP header uh, lens. Well, it's just, you know, uh, p with f, x, f, and multiply by 4, just two instructions. At, you know, load byte of set 14 and do some, just a couple of simple operations. Um, so enough, for, enough about the filter programs. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to... Um, to talk more about SLG and what it is and how it works. So basically, SLG is stackless JIT uh, compiler. Uh, it's BSD licensed and uh, it supports multiple architectures. So Intel x86, both in 64 flavor, ARM 3264, uh, uh, you know, several uh, uh, versions of ARM, PowerPC, MIPS, uh, MIPS 64, Spark 32. It doesn't have support for Spark. Uh, 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 64 did, and someone uh, did the Tylera uh, port. Uh, uh, everything except Tylera port is written by Zoltan, um, and I you know, work quite, uh, work with him on on some new stuff and you know, on, on improvements. So <coughs> right. Is it is it is it okay? So I, I'm going to talk about the new work-in-progress version of SLG. Uh, Zoltan made a lot of changes, and he renamed registers, he renamed instructions. It just you know he, he's uh, like thinking uh, about uh, rethinking about the project and you know, just making changes. So the new version will not be compatible. But once he, uh, he implements it, we, you know, at some point I will port, import it into the NetBSD tree, and I will switch um, to it. Um, <coughs> so it's. Uh, Stackless means it, it doesn't use uh, the stack for temporaries when it emulates instructions. <coughs> so, and it's uh, kind of, uh, it's like an assembler in some strange, for some, for some strange architecture, but each as uh, assembly instruction is actually API function call. So if you want to generate, you know, just, if you want to, uh, Add an instruction to your uh, stream, just you know, make a call, and uh, it has ten registers, and they are somehow mapped to native registers, but mappings uh, 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 di are different on different architectures. Uh, there are up to nine, 
in reality, you have less than uh, up to ten. You, you have less than uh, ten registers, less than ten scratch, and less than uh, ten uh, safe registers. But in total, there are at least eight registers. They share the same pool of uh, real, uh, real hardware registers, and they approach uh, from you know, from from uh, two different from the opposite ends. Um, uh, and some of, for some of those uh, registers are emulated, which means they use stack, but to emulate registers. And I think it's only for uh, x86. Um, they don't have enough registers uh, just, you know, just to, uh, while all other architectures have enough registers uh, to, uh, to be able to, uh, yeah, to, to uh, they have at least 10 registers uh, available from the pool. Um, yeah, you can also you, you can you have access to the stack via uh, SP register uh, like this SLG okay, actually <coughs> constant is just kind of a, a name of some some register and all registers are named SLG underscore R zero uh, so on and you can also load. Um, Emit an instruction to load uh, as the stack pointer into uh, a register of your choice. We can just say, I want a stack point in R2, something like this. It so it's stackless treat in terms of internal implementation. Internal implementation. Well, the level of its own instruction set provides you well with the frame at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you generate a function, you can say, I want this number of bytes available in my stack. And they will be available to you. Yeah, and the uh, stack list means for em uh, emulating, uh, for emulating um, <coughs> so I need some water. Uh, instructions, not registers, because when you emulate registers, you know you have no choice. But um, and uh, and for example, it quite often emulates registers. For example, in SLG, you can uh, you can it, you can have three apparent uh, uh, instructions where destination uh, register is different from two source registers. And not all architectures support, and not, not all uh, instructions support uh, three apparent. Uh, and those will be emulated using additional you know, morph instructions. Um, so also, SLG has labels and jumps and their objects. Uh, and they, they will be available as soon as your uh, uh, parent compile object is available. Um, and also, it's 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 JIT uh, just in time. I think it it means not only you can generate on the fly, but also you can patch your uh, code on the fly. So it has some support for changing constants after you generate it. You know, after you generate the code, you can uh, if you use special flags to mark uh, rewritable jumps and uh, rewritable constants, you can update them uh, on the fly. Um, so yeah, the main register is SLG move. This one, yeah, it can move the data between registers, between register and memory. Uh, yeah, obviously you have load store uh, of different width, byte half. It's called half. Uh, it's not half half word because there is word is it can be 32 bit or 64 bit, but just half it means uh, 16 uh, bit uh, and also 32 bit integer which is called int, and uh, they, it has uh, the word. Uh, bits, which is either 32-bit on 32-bit platforms or 64-bit on 64-bit platforms, um, and has different addressing modes. Like you can load. Uh, this means you can load a constant, and actually this constant is not real uh, compiler constant. It's um, um, like if you have uh, some some function in your in your in your C code. And you can pass it to while generating the code. You can, and it will be the constant because you know it, it doesn't change while your your um, generated code is executing. So it's constant for because you are doing it at runtime, not at link time. Um, so you can also do register plus offset, and you can do register plus offset uh, multiplied by two, four, and eight on 64-bit uh, platforms. Um, so and also you can do 32-bit mode uh, in, on 64-bit platforms, and this one is uh, it's particularly important for BPFJ because all BPFJ stuff, all BPF stuff is 32-bit uh, modulus, uh, you know, 32-bit um, arithmetic, 
uh, while on 64-bit platforms, you know, on Intel, the, there is R, RAX, EAX, so you can have, you, know, you can work with 32-bit numbers. And you need to use this flag, uh, mark your all operations with this flag to make sure they will be uh, as, you know, 32-bit, they will be, all operations will be 32-bit. You know. um, three operant instructions, I, I already explained. The, what it is, and they're often emulated. Uh, SLJIT has double and single precision floating point. Uh, I disabled it in the kernel because we, uh, we don't normally use uh, floating points in the kernel. And, uh, and uh, yeah, there's uh, some limitations, and the biggest limitation is you can all only call a function, an external function, with up to three arguments if you um, and this, this implementation comes from the fact that SLG is, uh, uh, it works on, on, on many platforms and like limitation of, of a single platform, you know, just limit all other architectures because you, you, you basically write one code uh, and it runs everywhere. It's not quite correct. You need to, like you wrote code once, test it twice and then run it everywhere because you need to, t t t to test at least one 32-bit platform and at least one 64-bit platform and you know just run you know, right once to test twice and run everywhere so this this is how it worked for me actually <laughs> and when I when I did the first version I was surprised there was a bug and I couldn't run it from the first try but when I you know, fixed the bug you know, it worked and I you know got home switched from 32-bit to 64-bit and you know, again it was mostly working you know, I, I, I fixed you know, one more, two more bugs, and you know, it was, all was done. Um, the, there is a special me mechanism for uh, doing fast calls, but it's very specific to SLG, uh, and I, I, I don't, I don't use it. And there are some other features I don't use in uh, uh, in uh, BPFG code generator. So yeah, I'm going to give you some example of. Uh, I, I, is it still okay to see this? Okay. So this is fast 32-bit division, <coughs> and uh, I this code comes from free, uh, NetBSD. Uh, so NetBSD has this uh, a fast divide 32 prepare and fast divide, but fast divide has a, diff a bit different prototype. I will explain it shortly. Um, so basically, it uh, replaces a division by uh, multiplication 32-bit division by 64-bit um, multiplication by a magic number, which is mal. A variable here and two shifts uh, and the real fast divide in NetBSD um, is similar to what what, I, uh, what you see here but it also passes all these four arguments by values uh, in here um, and I I pass only a single value just because I'm going to show you some assembler but you'll probably not see it because the screen is too small but it's you know if I pass them as if I pass this object as globals, uh, it, it's it's more easier uh, to compare SLG generated code with uh, what the GCC generates. Um, ah, oh, sorry, this this is one this one is important. So and uh, it's not C code, it's it's low code. I you know I wrote it while preparing uh, to the talk, uh, and I think I should zoom it in a little bit. <coughs> um, So this uh, Lua code is gets called from uh, from this crazy. <laughs> no, that's not. So it gets called yeah, like this. Uh, anyway, <laughs> okay, it gets called from the uh, host C. So this this is embedded, and you call it from the C, and from C you pass this three integers and they're accessible as this, this special syntax for um, assigning uh, arguments of uh, like from, you know you, you received uh, to multiple values uh, this represents all, all, all values passed to your function and it, it, the, it, this is a chunk of code and it's it represented as, as a function um, and as I think it's quite common in scripting language then I use um, I use you know I create a compiler uh, and I use chaining, so it, it, this this syntax means a method. Uh, I call a method of this object, and I use chaining. So each each method returns you know, the object itself, and you know just it's more convenient to 
um, how to use chaining. So I, first of all, I enter a function which ha accepts one argument and it uses one saved. Saved means a number of registers which are say like if, if this function will it, this function will not do any function calls. But if if a function does a generate function does a function call, it, this uh, uh, saved register will be saved. After they, they will have the same value after the call is uh, uh, returns, and uh, and you need also need saves for arguments. So that always at least you know like at least uh, like if, if there is one argument, then there are always at least one saved uh, register, and you, you you need one scratch register. So one saved is s s zero. This one one scratch is r r zero, and uh, yeah, it's a bit messy here. So maybe I can just. Do this and undo it later. Um, so yeah, it generates you know just a, func a function prologue, uh, and then you want to yeah I forgot to say on the previous slide uh, the pattern is you do binary operation followed by a shift and do it three times. Uh, first one is 64-bit mode. You just use mal. I I want to, to uh, you know just generate mal multiplication. The destination will be a zero. Uh, scratch register and I want to multiply S0 and immediate value mal which comes from your host C program um, and this one is often emulated because it's three apparent uh, instruction and then you just shift you shift by 32 immediate value and you, the result uh, goes to the same register as zero and this instruction they're similar but the main the main difference is that there is I which uh, which means 32-bit mode so the, uh, the rest will work in 32-bit mode uh, because you, you, you know you want to 32-bit uh, um, uh, logic, and the last one, oh, yeah, just very similar binary operation shift binary operation, shift. The last one means I I am returning from this function, I'm, so this generates an instruction uh, to return from the, from this function um, somewhere, and uh, move move the. Uh, uh, move the content of I, I return, uh, register I zero to the return register. Well, I zero is always the return register on all uh, um, on all uh, SOGIT support architectures. And this means move uh, 32 bit integer, unsigned 32 bit integer. It probably doesn't doesn't matter here because when we do initial shift by 32 it was 64, it, you know, just uh, zeroed out high 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 word. Just just to demonstrate, you can do this if you want to return uh, just mask uh, out the high high bits and return 32 bit on 64 bit platforms. Um, so that's that's you know that's how much code you need to generate. Uh, fast division and this corresponds to real BPF diff instruction. It's not done in uh, in my code yet because in, in C it's it, it you know it's quite bigger than this one. I'll show you in a second. And uh, it's you know, d division is not is not very common instruction in BPF programs because it's slow. I think everyone uh, avoids it. And uh, yeah, uh, so I need to undo first. And this is how corresponding uh, C code looks like, um, and it, it, it's it's not all uh, it's not uh, all instructions from from the uh, from the left side, just just about three I think. Um, so if you the first one is you know create the compile object, and in in C you have a uh, error checking. In uh, Lua, it just throws you, and assuming you you run your Lua code in the protected inside the protected call, the, you know the uh, C should uh, should catch an error and report it somehow. But in this case, you know it shouldn't report any error. You you have full control of this code from C. Um, and uh, then the next one. What's wrong? Okay. No. Uh, just you know, the same. The, they uh, all all my functions correspond uh, one to one to SLG, but they don't have SLG underscore prefix. Um, and this is essentially the same, except that you can do you can pass the same arguments here. And this is like, like named arguments. And first one, uh, first zero is options. It's always zero. I, you know, it's not present here. This three uh, corresponds to this, and these three are the same, but for floating point numbers. I, you know, I don't use any floating point. Uh, 
uh, well, floating, floating point registers. I don't use any floating point registers. And also, you know, I check the error. But uh, in SLG, you don't have to check an error after each, uh, uh, after each uh, uh, function. Uh, you can do it once in a while. And because, you know, it, it will remember your last error. But it's, it's good to detect uh, errors earlier. But it, it contributes to, uh, you know, to the code size quite a bit. And it, you know, it becomes, at some point, it becomes unreadable. Um, just, you know, just this, you know, this much here, uh, this much here. Um, and also, you, this, this is for 64-bit platforms, because this is use, using the same width multiplication. On 32-bit platforms, you need double width multiplication, because you need 64-bit multiplication here. And it will, you know, 32-bit uh, will have a different code. And you need some if here, if else, right? And similarly here. And also, there are some special cases, like your, you know, one of these shifts is 0, or, or like your, you divide by power of 2. And, and you know, this, it, at some point, it becomes you know, just, just quite, quite difficult to track, uh, like to understand what's, you know, where, where, where are you in the code and you know, what's, what's going on. And yeah, it's a bit easier if you do a Lua. So, yeah, ne next slide, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I will zo zoom in uh, each code, and I'm going to compare SLG with GCC. Um, it's a bit slow. Right. So, this is just, just the lower code that corresponds to. Uh, just to finish the Lua implementation. So first you push Lua program to the stack, to the Lua stack. Um, it's, it's, it's a single line of code plus, you know, two lines for error uh, checking. Uh, but it basically load, uh, you know, just loads that uh, uh, Lua code to the Lua stack and it, it, it will be pre represented as a function and that then pushes three, three uh, integers and then it calls uh, that, the, the function, you know, the, that chunk of code you push to the function with three uh, arguments, and it returns this, uh, one argument, which is the SLG compile object. And then you just, I'm using my uh, Lua SLG library, and you just and ex get the a pointer to that object uh, from the top of the stack. Minus one means get me an object from the top of the stack. Um, and uh, Every, like every, all, all objects created inside the Lua are managed by a garbage collector. So if you create multiple objects like jumps, labels, they will all be managed. Um, and if you can use the compiler um, when if if you if you make sure it's it's somewhere in the Lua stack, so it's available to Lua, it's not dead. Then you can use the compiler, and uh, then you can generate code. And when you generate code, you detach your compiler object from the generated code. You can you know, just uh, destroy the compiler object. And because it's managed by the Lua, you can just close the Lua state. And it, it will, you know, it will uh, deallocate memory for all, for all objects, uh, for all dependent objects. So you know, just, it's, it's a bit easier to manage uh, once, you have, uh, once you have the bindings, once you have the you know, just, um, uh, so library for for managing your like SLG bindings to Lua, you know, everything happens you know, just manages automatically by Lua, and then you can well, you need to, to free the code some some point later, but I'm going to show in the, on the assembly slide I will show you the the content of this function, which is generated on the fly of course by SLG. <coughs> Next uh, one is this. Yeah, you, you've already seen this, but yeah, the pattern is binary operation followed by shift two more times. And it's actually, I think, multiplication by residual, scaled residual, with the correction step. That's what it is. <coughs> and uh, so this is one particular implementation. And uh, on the right side, you see a very simple uh, code for the compiler. and. Uh, it's, the compiler is not limited to this particular implementation in the middle. It can do, you know, other, other, can apply, try other alternatives. And it's indeed much, much shorter. So this one is a uh, compiler generated code. Uh, it doesn't use, you know, this algorithm because it uses a single shift and different magic, uh, yeah, magic uh, number. Let me try to zoom in. Yeah. 
but, and uh, real difference here. Uh, this is a solid code, and it's a bit bigger because the push and uh, you know this working with stack point, uh, uh, not a not. Not a solid stack pointer, just you know this, this machine uh, stack pointer, and I think this one is moving our safe register somewhere uh, because you know it's to save it, uh, and this also has some overhead, um, yeah, here, and this move actually comes from uh, remember we returned 32 bit, we did a special move underscore u, ui to return 32 bit. I think you can get rid of this by just not emitting that, uh, that instruction. And you know, overall, it's it's similar, uh, just, just a bit shorter here because you don't have to load the constant from uh, the global memory. You know, like you are shifting by one, and here you're shifting by four. You just use the immediate constants. Um, and for multiplication, you know, it's three instructions. You load uh, your constant, you move uh, because it's three apparent version. You move save uh, uh, register somewhere and just do unsigned multiplication here. So that's you know how it looks like, and you know it's uh, just you know right ones. Oh, yes, in some cases you need two, two different implementations, but uh, it, you know it works everywhere. Um, yeah, usually it works everywhere. So yeah, I'm running a bit of time, but because you know just uh, uh, and uh, ah, by the way, I, I, I yeah all 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 graphs are where drawn using uh, Lua and Graphviz. Um, that's why I have so many, so many graphs, because it's so easy to, uh, to draw. And I did uh, this, all this um, just in two evenings, I think. Um, all right, I can switch back to this mode. So yeah, um, BPF optimizations. I, uh, it's, it's, it's running in the kernel, and uh, I, you know, it's, you need to be more paranoid about optimi do, doing optimizations in the kernel. Um, and uh, so what I do, I assume that uh, um, BPF program coming from the user space is actually is already optimized. Like, for example, if it's, it's coming from libpcap library, then it's already optimized. And for example, if I, like, if I like, look at some particular program and I see it, it's moving value between A and X register 10 times, and you see in the end it's just a single move, so I don't do it because this can be done in user space. So you just don't do it. Yeah? Don't, don't move stuff unnecessarily. Um, yeah, and uh, I, I have some exceptions, but they come when, uh, like when I, I need, when I need something and I, like they come for, for free, uh, or mostly free, then I uh, add those optimizations. And unreachable instructions is a natural step when you do like initial flow analysis. It's a you know, natural step to see whether this reachable instruction is reachable or not. But in a normal program, you don't see unreachable instructions. So yeah, they should be optimized. And uh, um, also, A and X might be used un uninitialized. And uh, in, the, in those cases, I set them to zero. But uh, Actually, if you don't initialize them explicitly in your filter program, uh, the kernel will not accept them because uh, just there's, they will fail the validation step. Um, but yeah, just you don't have to do it, but I still do it as a safety net. And uh, because I'm not, uh, it, it, I'm not limited to NetBSD where but BPF validate does this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I do fixed number of passes through the filter program to prevent any, like, you know, just. Uh, uh, inf infinite iterations trying to find an optimal solution, I, uh, just fixed number of uh, passes, and that's it. Um, so yeah, I, I implement trivial hints, and I think everyone else implements trivial hints. Uh, like if X is not available, is not used anywhere in your program, then don't use it, and you will save some instructions in prolog, epilog of, uh, of a generated function. Um, yeah, find use before you need. Again, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, um, it, it, they will not pass if you use if you need, if you use before you need then they, those programs will not pass a, a validation but I still do it um, jump yeah and I have array bound the main optimization is array bound check uh, elimination and I do it in two passes I, I don't have time to explain it in details but I, I'll, I'll show you the results uh, so yeah, it applies to packet reads um, and because uh, filter programs often are <coughs> um, 
read uh, 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 bytes in uh, the collision offsets, you, you can save some, optimize away some checks by you know just checking the, uh, like, like if it's going to, to read the um, packet at offset 24, byte at offset 23 anyway, then you can just uh, check it at the beginning. Um, and yeah, again, this one is not, is not very visible. But I can zoom in, oops. So yeah, basically it, it needs 14 packet, uh, uh, 14 bytes, and, and this one needs 24, and I can just move it to the check here and don't check, don't, don't do this check at all. And actually, so this is, it needs 14 bytes, 24, 22, 15, 15, and some unknown offset. Uh, but basically, it's, you know, just you can do a single check here, 20, 24. Is, is it 24 like, or, or more? Then go there. Otherwise, it's too short. Go just straight to return zero. And you, you just have some additional check here. And I think that's the, the, the two checks you have. Like one check here and only one instead of two checks here. And no checks for this. Uh, so you, you know, eliminated actually four checks, one here and three of those. Uh, and that's you know, just what my optimization does. And I implemented it in Lua. That's why you, uh, so I don't have time to explain you about execution trees and how uh, my algorithm works. But basically, it, yeah, now that I need to tell you one thing is um, actually this, when you look at this, uh, Okay, I'm running out of time. <clears throat> they always fall back to return zero, return zero, and there are no no reads at all uh, in this branch. And does it mean you you need to disable your optimization? Like because in, in one path it's 24, but in the other path it's just zero. Uh, but because <clears throat> um, uh, because lows at uh, high offsets uh, are not uh, return zero anyway, and uh, there are no side effects in BPF programs. You can just assume that instead of return zero, you can say load uh, load uh, packet byte at oh, the, in this case it's a, it's a word at in infinite offset. Well, it's in reality it's u in 32 max plus four, but it's you know high enough and higher than any real offset because you know this load is indistinguishable. It will return zero anyway, and yeah, it was previously return zero. Now it's just loaded this ridiculous offset <coughs> because they both return zero and there are no side effects. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what you have in the end. Just just check here and one check here instead of two. And all those are optimized away. <coughs> and uh, and if, you, if you change this to return zero here instead of your short marks, the whole program would collapse, but I don't do this optimization. And like, if, if this was a part of a bigger uh, program, uh, then I could apply some optimizations to the other part because, like, if, if this program uses, like, this fragment uses some stuff, but this one doesn't, I can just, you know, just take advantage of it. But this is not, you know, just you don't see it in real programs that, you know, you, you know, just they, 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 like, they are not unreachable code in and real uh, BPF programs that you receive from user space. And uh, yeah, I think I don't have time for future optimizations, but, and for above stuff, uh, and for testing, yeah, I use, I use RAMP for testing, it's very modular, and just like every time I, I, I add a feature, I just run it through the tests, and it, it tests both uh, user space and kernel, and there are some differences in the kernel because they, the M buffs, <coughs> Uh, and, and buff chains, and they're a bit different to work with. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. <coughs> Thank you. Any questions? Well, I, uh, yeah, uh, tail error was done by uh, by one person. I think it, sh it, sh it should be uh, quite straightforward, but, and yeah, it will take some time. And you need someone who is skilled to you know to do uh, to know 
enough about the architects. Well, you, I think you, you can just read the um, instruction format and ABI specs and do it, even if you don't have enough skills. But it's just may I try to answer? Yeah. I actually looked at uh, adding Spark 64 support, right. and it's like 500 lines of code to do. But I didn't come around to do it. <laughs> yeah, and Dalton doesn't have. I asked ask him. He doesn't have time, and he doesn't have hardware. But I told him it, hardware should be a problem. You know, if if you if you want to work on Spark 64, we can donate you hardware. I definitely have it on my to-do list, but it's uh, not an empty list. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.